Welcome everybody to this workshop where I'd like to introduce you to Binder, a really fantastic tool which will allow you to produce fully reproducible research. Uh, the content that I'm going to cover today is very much inspired by a workshop run by the Turing Way. If you haven't come across the Turing Way before, I thoroughly recommend that you check it out. Uh, the Turing Way is a handbook for reproducible data science, full of lots of absolutely fantastic resources. So we know that uh, adopting open and reproducible research practices uh, is important. In order to do that, uh, we need to share our data so that obviously others can access our data, run analysis over our data. We also need to be able to share our code. So we need to be able to share our analysis code with others so that when other people are you know, analyzing our data, they're actually building the same statistical models that we built when we um, you know, ran the data in the first place. Importantly, we also need to share something else, which is the computational environment. So I'm gonna talk briefly about why this is important before moving on to discussing how we actually do that. So this uh, graphic uh, from a paper by Roger Peng in 2011, I think really nicely captures the importance of um, sharing these three things. The gold standard uh, for producing reproducible research is actually providing others with our data, our code, but in such a way that our code be, can be executed in the computational environment that we executed it in originally. So why is it important that we share our computational environment? So very often, analysis code can break, and this generally happens in one of two ways. So it could be the case that code that worked previously now simply doesn't work. Uh, perhaps a function in an R package was updated. Uh, for example, you know, ls mains became em mains, so that uh, this meant that old code, you know, old scripts that I had written using using the ls mains function, uh, now simply wouldn't run because of the uh, changes to the package itself. In addition to uh, code maybe not working, uh, you can have a slightly different case where the code that worked previously still works, but might produce a slightly different result, or it might have warnings in you know the output that you didn't uh, didn't spot earlier. Um, the LMA4 package for building mixed models started to make explicit various warnings in a later version of a package versus an earlier one. Um, so you get sort of changes in the way in which uh, the package actually um, produces its output. Um, but you also get changes associated with base R that can cause things to behave slightly uh, differently, uh, maybe in unexpected ways. And I guess the two uh, you know, examples most recently are the changes to how the sample function worked in R 3.6 versus previous versions of R. Um, and then in R 4.0, when the strings of factors uh, parameter was set to um, is set to false by default now, whereas previously it was set to true, and this can cause confusion if you haven't been keeping up to date with the changes uh, in you know the way in which uh, you know BSR works. So these are just you know three general examples uh, that really highlight, I think, the need to be able to capture the versions of the different R packages that you used in your analysis originally, plus any dependencies. But also, uh, it's important that you capture the version of R that you used in your original analysis too, because you don't want any of these um, changes to R packages or to BSR itself uh, basically result in others not being able to reproduce your research findings. So what's under the hood in terms of what we're going to talk about in the context of Binder is something called Docker that you really don't need to understand in detail. Uh, but basically Docker will package together your data code uh, and the dependencies in a container to ensure that um, everything will work seamlessly in any computational environment. So when you run a Docker container, it's like running your analysis on a computer that's got the same configuration as your own computer had, 
at the point in time when you ran the original analysis. So that's kind of the essence of what Docker does. So we're going to be using Docker, but we're going to be using it via something called Binder and Binder Hub. So Binder is powered by Binder Hub, which is an open source tool that deploys the Binder service in the cloud. And how it works is that it pulls a repository that you set up on GitHub, for example, um, into a Docker container using repo to Docker. And if you haven't come across GitHub before, um, these kind of infrastructures, you can think of a repository as kind of like a folder containing your R code, your data, uh, other folders perhaps, and a few other small bits, of, bits and pieces. Uh, but this repository, uh, when it sits on GitHub, sits in the cloud rather than on your computer. And what Binder does is that it sort of uses the repository that you set up from GitHub uh, uses this repo to Docker to build a, a kind of um, container and it will actually pull the versions of the R packages that you want um, according to a date that you actually specify in a little configuration file. And it, pro it pulls these from MRAN, which is basically um, provides a time stamped snapshot of CRAN um, over um, a number uh, on particular days, on particular dates. So Binder is a fantastic tool. Uh, it's very well documented. You can read lots about it. Um, just follow this link at the bottom of this slide. So let's actually get into the nuts and bolts of what actually um, you need to do in order to produce a binderized um, repository. So if you look at this example here, this is one of my Binder demos. And this is a repository that you see over here on the left. You see that it contains a number of files and it contains um, a data folder. So this repository contains my data uh, and my R script, um, plus a few other bits and pieces. So you'll see the install.r and the runtime.txt files. So these are kind of critical uh, for, for Binder. So this is really what um, you know, a simple GitHub repository might look like. And when I link my GitHub repository, uh, and build it in Binder and launch it, what I actually get is in my web browser, the version of R and R Studio running uh, in my web browser with my code, my data, and the appropriate versions of the packages um, that I was using when I did the analysis originally. Um, and it's uh, generated in a web browser, so it means it's a, a web link that you can also share with your collaborators. So if you're working with somebody, uh, you don't need to, you know, literally share your screen anymore, you know, have them look at it or share it over um, some sort of video conferencing tool. You can actually send them a link which will allow them to open in their web browser your analysis, uh, your data uh, in the same computational environment uh, that you've got running on your machine. So it makes collaboration um, easy as well. So let's look at the steps that we need to go through to set up um, a binderized version of one, or one of our repositories. So I'm assuming here you haven't used GitHub before. So the first thing you need to do is actually set yourself up with a GitHub account. So that's fairly, fairly straightforward. Once you've done that, you need to create a new repository. You need to ensure that you are making the repository public and you need to ensure that you initialize it with a readme, okay? And you just type the repository name up here, okay? Um, you can add a license as well if you want. Maybe you want to select uh, the MIT license. And it's always a good idea actually to add a, a, a git ignore. Uh, I use the default R1 um, is probably, probably what I would recommend. So we create a new repository. So we're going to do this uh, sort of manually. Um, if you are familiar with Git and GitHub, you kind of know presumably about uh, committing and sort of pushing to GitHub and whatnot, but I'm assuming here you haven't used GitHub before, so we're going to do this very uh, simply and we're going to do it manually. We're going to first of all upload our R script and data, and this will be our first commit. Uh, so we upload these uh, files and we click on commit changes down here. Then we need to create two files, which are important uh, for Binder to know what it's supposed to do. The first one is called runtime.txt. 
And this will contain the date and version of R and its associated packages that you want to build in your new uh, container. Okay. Uh, the other file is called install.r and that will simply contain the list of R packages that need to be installed in order for your script to run. So we need to create these two files. Again, we're just going to do this manually in the context of GitHub. So the first thing we want to do is click on create new file. We're then going to create a file called runtime.txt. So you'll just type that file name in and you'll add one line of code, which is R hyphen, then the version of R that you want to be um, you know, built in your binderized environment. And then the date in the format, year, month, day. So that's all that needs to go into the runtime.txt file. The second file we need to create is called install.r. And in that, we simply um, have an install.packages uh, line or lines of code installing the packages that we need for our analysis. Um, don't forget to click commit after you've created each file. That's basically the bulk of what we need to do. So now we can go to the website mybinder.org and up here you can type in the uh, GitHub URL of the repository that you want to binderize. Down here, select URL and type RStudio. It will then generate a URL you can share with others so that they can actually run uh, your analysis with your data in your computational environment on their own machine. Okay, so we'll type uh, the information in here and then we simply click on the launch button. And what that will do, it will actually start to build our um, container using repo to docker. And if you click on the build logs bar, you can actually see this in progress. Um, it can take you know, a while for this to be built. Um, 10 minutes or so uh, is not uncommon. Um, once it's built though, as long as you don't change anything in your GitHub repository, it doesn't need to be rebuilt in future. The image is actually saved uh, and you can access it again without going through this build process. So if Binder can find an image that it's built previously, uh, it will simply launch that. But if you made any changes, uh, even to your README file on uh, your GitHub repository, it will actually go through the whole build process again. But either way, once Binder launches, you'll get the following in your browser. Um, so it's great because it's also going to work uh, on any device that can access the web. So, you know, tablet or phone or anything, um, you can actually, um, you know, run, uh, rerun your analysis uh, in, your, in your environment. So we see we've got here, we've got R3.6, that's the version we asked for. And we've got the packages all set up um, associated with the date that we specified. So they've been pulled from MRAN. Um, for that um, dates snapshot. That's basically Binder in a nutshell. It's very straightforward. You don't have to worry about all the uh, clever stuff that's going on under the hood. You don't have to get into the world of Docker unless you really want to. Uh, so I think Binder is a great tool for uh, people who are learning to do reproducible research using R to actually build these uh, fully reproducible environments with shared data and code. Um, a few things to note, um, installing the entire tidyverse, for example, can take a long time. There's a, there are a lot of packages in it. And actually, if you're wanting your initial build to be as quick as it can be, it's better to install only those packages that you're actually going to be using in your script, whether it's ggplot2, dplyr, readr, or whatever. Um, and then it, that will also ensure that the, those individual packages themselves are consistent with the date in your runtime.txt file. So as I said, it can take um, 15 minutes or so with even just a few packages for your binder to be first built. Um, but it's actually building on the cloud. So you could just close your computer, go away, get a coffee or whatever as the build continues. So you don't have to sit there with your computer open as the build continues. Um, and it's also worth remembering you can change the version of R that you want in your environment relatively straightforwardly just by changing um, the version in the runtime.txt file. 
So it's always a good idea to make sure for ultimate reproducibility that you're definitely making having the right packages uh, built in your uh, binderized uh, container. So it's always a good idea to update uh, your packages locally on your own machine before you sort of do your analysis. Um, you know, then you can be sure that when you build your binder, you know, if it's later that day or whatever, it's going to be exactly the same version of packages if you put, uh, say, that day's date or the previous day's date uh, in the configuration file. Um, and as I said, just be patient. The first time your binder builds, it can take, it can take a bit of a while, um, but it'll get there in the end. Um, and once it's built, as long as you don't change anything in your repository, it probably will need to be built again. So what I'd like you to do now is start from slide 12, uh, taking an R script that maybe you've already written, uh, and I simply want you to binderize it. So go through those steps, uh, and hopefully, um, hopefully you'll enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm.